On the eve of the Iowa caucuses, then-presidential primary candidate Pete Buttigieg made a very interesting observation. He pointed out that when the Dems have won the White House recently, they've done so with young political newcomers, for example, Bill Clinton or Barack Obama. And when they've lost the White House, they've done so with old established politicians, for example, John Kerry or Hillary Clinton. So then it leads to a very interesting question. Is this just convenient campaign rhetoric for the young mayor trying to enhance his chances? Or is there actually a statistically significant trend here? And should the Dems be really, really worried about running Joe Biden in November? To answer that question, let's look at the data. Test Pete Buttigieg's claim that only a young Democrat can take the White House successfully, we'll look at the last 15 presidential elections going all the way back to John F. Kennedy. For each presidential election, we have the age of both the Democrat and the Republican candidates at the time of the election, as well as the outcome. One extra variable that we'll consider is whether or not one of the candidates is actually an incumbent, and if that incumbency will have any effect on the uh, candidate's success. The outcome variable we have here is Boolean, so it's going to be zero if the Democratic candidate lost and a one if the candidate, well, won. <laughs> here you can see a plot of the data. On the horizontal axis, we have the age of the Democratic candidate in years. On the vertical axis, we have whether or not that candidate won the White House. So here we can see, for example, President Obama's two victories, and President Bill Clinton's two victories, as well as many losses, including, say, Al Gore or John Kerry. So to model such data, we want to fit use a linear model. Now the problem is that our outputs are Boolean or binary valued, that is zeros and ones. So we can't just fit a straight line to the data. Instead, what we're going to do is we're going to try to fit a straight line or a linear model to the log of the odds ratio, or just the log odds. So that leads to the question, what are the odds? If we consider the probability of an event, that number will be something between 0 and 1. So for example, if I were to flip a coin, the probability that I get a head landing straight up is going to be one half or 50%. Now the odds is going to tell me something different. It's going to tell me what is the payoff for a fair wager on such a bet. So if I were to bet $1 on a coin landing heads up, well, then I should win a dollar and that would make it a fair bet. In this case, the odds are 1 to 1. However, if I were to flip two coins and wager a dollar that they both land heads up, well now the probability of winning is only one quarter, and that leads to odds of 1 in 3. That is, if I wager one dollar, I should get three back in order to make this a fair bet. Now, in order to actually model data like this, we can use a technique called logistic regression. Logistic regression tries to fit a linear model to the log of the odds ratio. And it is a very nice technique known as a generalized linear model. So we could go ahead with this, but there's a problem. And the problem is that our data is not independent. See, the logistic regression assumes that our data is in fact independent. Every observation, all say 15 elections, would have to be completely independent events. And that doesn't occur. In fact, it explicitly doesn't occur because we have the same candidates running more than once. So given that, for example, President Bill Clinton ran in 92 and won, we now have evidence of what might happen in 1996 when he runs again for re-election. And it doesn't just have to happen with winners. Uh, we have Nixon, who lost initially in 1960, um, but then came back to win two more times in presidential elections. So the key is, is that as a result of having candidates over time, 
come back again, there are natural dependencies in our data and we can no longer rely on logistic regression, no matter how much we want to. And that leads us to a new technique called the generalized estimating equation. Generalized estimating equations allow us to fit things such as generalized linear models, such as the logistic regression, the Poisson regression, standard linear regression, but with the added addition of dependencies in the data. And this gives us a much more powerful tool to work with. So what we do is we assume that if a candidate, say, appeared in more than one election, then the outcomes of those elections are going to have some correlation. That's going to be a number between minus one and plus one. If it's close to minus one, that's telling us that either a success in the first will lead to a failure in the next or a failure will lead to a success as opposed to uh, if the correlation is close to one. In that case, success begets success, failure begets failure. And as a result, we have an additional parameter in our model that we can estimate, which is this correlation factor. So looking closely at our model, what we find is that the age of the Democratic candidate is actually a marginally significant predictor for whether or not that candidate will take the White House. Now, if we stare at that number a little bit further, and we exponentiate both sides, we get a value of about 0.5. So what does that mean? Well, that means that with every successive year of a candidate's life, the odds of that candidate, that Democratic candidate, winning the White House get cut in half. Now, that sounds really terrible. And in fact, if we look at the plot of the data, we find that at 52.5 years old, it's about a toss-up, a 50-50 chance that, that, that the Democrat will win. And with every subsequent year, we just start cutting the odds in half every single year. Now, that makes us think that someone like Joe Biden, well into his 70s, is doomed. But can we actually trust this model? Yes, it is significant, but we should look a little bit further. One way we can test the accuracy of actually doing predictions with this model is through a leave one out prediction accuracy. What that means is that we have 15 data points. Now what we can do is we can sequentially take out one of those data points, use the remaining 14 to fit the model, and then see if we can actually predict what the one we left out did. So for example, we start with Kennedy. We take out that election and we use only the 14 previous elections to predict whether or not JFK will actually win. Of course, he did. And then we can go sub uh, sequentially through all of the remaining presidential elections. And after doing that, what we have is the following table. So looking at the table here, what we see is that with about two-thirds accuracy, we're able to predict the result of the presidential election based on the candidate's age. But then it comes to the further question, which is, what would happen if we used a slightly different data set? So what if we were to go back for the last 18 presidential elections, taking us all the way back to the election of Harry Truman in 1948? Well, if we include all the presidential elections from Truman in 48 up to present day, then things change slightly. If we were to fit the exact same model with a few more of these data points, including the Eisenhower versus Stevenson um, elections, then what we see is that we still get a declination in the odds of about 50%. In this case, it's slightly weaker, maybe about 54%. Um, but we still have a decrease in the odds of success for every subsequent year of the Democratic president's life. But the result is not significant, and it leads to question as to whether we can actually even use this model for any sort of prediction um, or interpretability. So in the end, while we can fit this model to the data, it does lead to the question of whether or not we can actually trust it for doing prediction. And of course, the election coming up will be very different than any of the previous ones, but to a certain extent, Every election is different than the previous ones, and it is extremely hard to tell exactly what's going to happen. Now, our model says that Joe Biden is doomed. Do I actually think that's going to happen? Well, no. But did I think Hillary Clinton was going to win? Yes. So really, who in the world knows what's going to happen? 
I think Joe Biden still has a chance. But if the Democrats really wanted to be safe, they might have wanted to pick a younger candidate just to go with the historical data. It's better to be on the safe side. So how is the election in the fall going to turn out? Well, who really knows at this point? But at least I know one thing. When it's all over, we can look at the data. (laughs) 